Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking to an exiled journalist from London. He's originally from Turkey and because of the circumstances in Turkey, he can't not, he, he's not able to perform journalism in Turkey. But we'll be talking uh, an important issue in Turkey, enforced disappearances, and he's the right person to talk about this. Uh, Mr. Kelim Balji, welcome. Thank you. Um, when we when we say about enforced disappearances for the people who doesn't know among the audience what does it exactly means enforced disappearances well uh, it is a practically disappearance of uh, individuals but it is an enforced disappearance meaning they themselves are not escaping from their family members but they are either kidnapped or are uh, under arrest, but their family members are consistently not informed about their whereabouts. So both categories, whether they are kidnapped by uh, mafia or state officials or are under arrest, but their family members are not uh, informed by uh, about their whereabouts. Uh, internationally, these two people are uh, kept under enforced disappearance category. It's an internationally crime against humanity. So, but the, the main uh, accused party in here is a government, generally. Government, instead of putting someone on, on a proper arrest and be responsible for the person, they abduct a person and interrogate, question or torture or do whatever they do outside the remit of the law. That's why that's called as, as a enforced disappearance. Is that right? Uh, usually, that is always an, a body uh, within the government apparatus, but it is n never acknowledged by uh, the governments in question. Uh, we are going to speak about Turkey, for example. Back in 1980s and 1990s, largely the Kurdish-speaking population of Turkey was victim to enforced disappearances. At that time, uh, there was uh, an unacknowledged uh, intelligence operation called the JITEM, uh, Gendarmerie Intelligence uh, Organization, uh, that, was, uh, that was responsible for uh, enforced disappearances. But up until now, the Turkish uh, government consistently continued on denying existence of any such organization or any such operation that continued on. The numbers were huge, thousands at that time. Uh, some estimates come goes even to 17 thousand people that were uh, that disappeared and the, the family members were never informed about whereabouts of them alive or their bodies. I see. Um, uh, is there any public outcry reaction in the history of Turkish uh, politics? Like is there any, like the, the family members, are they searching for these people or urging the government to search to those people? How is their struggle? goes on for the people who the Turkish democracy know. back in Turkish democracy back in 1980s and 1990s was even worse than it is uh, nowadays in the sense that the, the enforced disappearances that we are speaking about at those times were taking place under Kurdish populated areas where largely those areas were under military rule at that time so there was no civilian governance there was no civilian authority to go and ask for uh, the family members that are uh, that have disappeared. It was largely between the gendarmerie uh, intelligence operations and the family members, and they would never receive a real answer. And the gendarmerie had this um, awful tradition of claiming that any disappeared person is actually a terrorist in the mountains. So they will say, don't come and ask to us, go to the mountains and ask to PKK because apparently your son or your relative, your husband is a terrorist and in the mountain. Soon you will find his body somewhere uh, fighting with the Turkish army. So uh, the family members at that time were uh, stigmatized by the very fact that their, their relatives had disappeared. But occasionally, those disappearances took place um, under witnesses, you know, eyewitnesses. So Turkish gendarmerie or police or intelligence agents came uh, and took a member of the family. Uh, and they said, just this is only for um, an investigation and so on. But then 
uh, the member never came back. Uh, the gendarmerie used the tradition of saying, oh, we released him only after two hours, but then uh, the person wouldn't be found ever. Uh, the Turkish um, society became more and more concerned about disappearances only very recently. Uh, a woman organization called uh, Saturday Mothers um, co coordinated uh, relatives of disappeared people, particularly in larger cities like Istanbul, Izmir, and Ankara. And uh, they were uh, coming together every Saturday and protesting and calling uh, both international uh, family of uh, humanity and, and, and countries, and also the local uh, authorities to do something to, uh, to know whereabouts of those people. But unfortunately, under the current uh, purge of democratic rights in Turkey, the AKP government uh, started to ban those gatherings also. In a sense, I can say there was a time between, I can say, 2001 and 2009, where uh, concerns were easily uh, expressed in public uh, square or media. But nowadays, even if your relative is lost, or disappeared, uh, the stigma comes together with it. It's not only a stigma that is done by the government, but the society also looks at the relatives of the disappeared people with a kind of suspicion. I see. Um, as far as I followed, um, Amnesty International did a campaign about the Saturday mothers, but despite the international efforts, they have been suppressed recently. But I want to come to more uh, recent events. We are talking about the uh, uh, United Nations involving itself, asking some explanation to Turkey about six individuals uh, who were abducted by uh, alleged government or, or state apparatus in, in different places. What is the story of these six uh, abducted people? Uh, you know, what, what happened to them? This is a particularly interesting case because uh, all six uh, people, they are all men, uh, they were all former members of the state apparatus, meaning they were public officials. Uh, they were sacked from their positions under the state of emergency uh, decrees. So they have something in common. They were previously working for the government, and not so much high echelons of government bureaucracy, but they were working for the government. They had lost their jobs because of uh, the presidential decrees. Uh, that were promulgated under the state of emergency. Uh, not all of, all of them were being sought after, but uh, they had investigations going uh, about them. Uh, and all of them were, uh, all of them disappeared or kidnapped uh, in the month of uh, February last year, so th this year. So it is uh, already uh, about eight months that they are uh, gone missing. Uh, for about six months, uh, their family members were not informed about their whereabouts. Uh, usually the answer they received from government authorities uh, was uh, that they should have left the country. The police didn't have any information about them. Even in the occasion that uh, the family members informed the police that we know the people who came in were police officers in plain suit, and they showed their you know, police cards, and some, in some occasions, in, in at least one of them, the family members were informed that we are the state, don't look after your relative, uh, we will take care of them, don't go to the police, don't ask anybody, don't speak to the, uh, to, to the media, uh, we are the state. So they spoke to the police, they went to the members of the parliament, they went to international organizations, but nothing came out of it. Only in late uh, July, four of the abducted people, on one particular occasion, they were, uh, the, the police uh, claims that they were trying to reach to the uh, anti-terror uh, center of the Ankara police, this is the capital city of Turkey, and they were uh, detained. Uh, eventually, they were also arrested. Four of them are still behind the bars. Um, in, interestingly, uh, the family members were let to speak to those four people only for about four or five minutes and under police 
uh, control. They were never left alone with their family members. Uh, they were not given uh, advocates, lawyers. Um, in fact, two of them spoke to their wives and said uh, they don't want any uh, advocate. They don't want the Twitter campaign, social media campaign to continue on. Uh, their wives uh, informed the public that they had lost uh, a lot of uh, weight and they were speaking uh, in a frozen manner. They were not communicative. Uh, and that they didn't want any kind of defense uh, in the in the court. In the end, the Ankara Bar Association appointed, and this is the legal uh, case procedure, appointed lawyers for them, but they denied uh, the uh, lawyers also. They didn't want to, to be represented by the lawyers of the Ankara Bar Association. Uh, interestingly, a secret uh, lawyer came out uh, and appeared in the court representing these uh, four people. Uh, and this lawyer, a lady, also uh, ordered and gag order about court cases. So we have here six people gone missing. Four of them suddenly uh, From appeared. different cities, gone missing they, in they different are, cities. They are, they are all from six different cities. They Previously, they didn't knew each other at all. And suddenly four of them are, 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 are found, the police says. And the police initially claimed that they were actually trying to reach to the police uh, in a strange way. Uh, and the police again claimed that they do not need any lawyer. They have enough money uh, for the lawyers uh, to hire private lawyers. And then they apparently uh, hired a, a lawyer that is actually not working for the benefit of the victims, but against the victims. The lawyer in question has already publicized, made public that they were not abducted. Uh, they are quite well uh, by means of their mental health. Uh, in one occasion, she claimed that they are actually celebrating the birthday of the lawyer in question behind the bars and so on. Well, these are not uh, consistent uh, with the situation under question. Uh, the remaining two people are still uh, missing, uh, and the wife of one of them is still continuing on the fight to find uh, him. But unfortunately, whenever they appeal to any state official, they usually are teased. They are given um, answers together with a stigma, as if the family is altogether a member of a terror organization and so on. They usually say, your husband must have left you without informing you at all. I am sure she, he is outside the country. But those four people who are now uh, behind the bars, about them also the police had said, had suggested that they must have left the country. So this is, uh, in a way, systematical uh, enforced disappearance that happened before, and it used to be people were often killed as well and, and probably buried in undisclosed locations. I think part of uh, past Ergenekon trials were trying to uncover this and uh, bring about uh, the JITEM, which, which was never acknowledged by any government official at all. But what are the differences between, let's say, 19s of, 90s of Turkey where these sort of uh, Kurdish activists who were being dragged out of their houses and taken into custody by the, some government officials and gone missing, and, and today's case, for instance. First, the, a, a major similarity is the perpetrator. You know, it was then uh, an organ within the state, if you wish, call it a deep state organ, but you know, unacknowledged state organization, let me say, and it is now once again an unacknowledged state organization. At that time, it was largely the gendarmerie under uh, state of emergency rule, uh, largely in the southeast and eastern provinces of Turkey, and this meant uh, the main victims were the Kurdish population. Uh, nowadays, it is uh, largely uh, the members of the Gulen movement or alleged members of the Gulen movement or, uh, or again, Kurds. Uh, at that time, uh, there was the symbol of uh, disappearances uh, was uh, white uh, Renatoros cars, uh, whereas nowadays it, it seems to be a higher level uh, operation. They are uh, using uh, black uh, transporters. 
which can host more people in. Uh, but there is this symbol. Symbol is still being used. And I assume uh, that whoever is doing this is actually uh, trying to give a sense of continuity because it helps to spread the fear. Uh, both at that time and now, the placards of the cars uh, were, uh, were hidden uh, and it is uh, again uh, repeated. So uh, we have started to see black transporters without any placard on them uh, traveling in the roads of Turkey. This in itself is giving a, a message to any opposition voice that something bad can happen to you. But I have to underline the uh, 1980s and 1990s operations of uh, disappearances usually ended uh, with uh, killing uh, or the, the bodies of the people were found uh, in remote locations. In some cases, I do believe that the, the bodies were left with some gun and so on. And then the prosecutors claimed that there was an operation and they were fighting with the police. Uh, the number is huge, 17,000 I already pronounced, so it is incompatible by means of size and by means of the level of violence. I, back in Turkey, when I was performing as a journalist, uh, together with my friends, we worked on acid wells uh, case. These were the acid wells of a petroleum company which was largely believed back in Turkey that the bodies of missing uh, persona uh, were melted down so as to leave no evidence behind. Um, and the coverage has led to an investigation, a legal investigation against uh, former members of the gendarmerie at that stage. But unfortunately, uh, under the new state of emergency, all door, those cases are closed and all alleged perpetrators are cleansed of uh, allegations. The NIV uh, wave uh, is being done largely in Ankara, even if uh, the person uh, in question that is kidnapped is kidnapped from Istanbul or Izmir, they are all brought to Ankara. And this brings to mind the black sites, meaning these are torture houses very close to uh, Ankara airport. We have seen reports about people who are kidnapped, not only from within Turkey, but from without Turkey also being brought to Ankara, close five minutes drive, they usually use this term. Of course, they don't know where they are going because they are usually blinded uh, about where they are going. And uh, But uh, about five minutes drive from the airport of Ankara, we don't know which airport we are speaking. There are a few military airports in Ankara also. But in anyhow, these are, this is the center of the country uh, that they are kept. For a long time, six months is a huge time for any kind of torture operation. And uh, these are plain uh, state officials. You know, you wouldn't expect those people to know highly confidential issues that any organization uh, in the state apparatus, apparatus wouldn't know. In the end, this is a fear uh, campaign. They are trying to spread uh, fear. Uh, in the hearts of any opposition group in Turkey. Uh, and also, uh, be, despite international pressures, nothing is being done on this issue. Any attempt by the opposition parties to call for an investigation within the parliament is blocked by uh, the government. Compared to 1980s and 1990s, I can still say the families are a bit more courageous. At that time, the families wouldn't be able to speak out there was no media uh, in support of the Kurdish uh, plight and they wouldn't be able to speak. Uh, I can say, despite the numbers are smaller now, the families are more courageous. And there is the fact of the HDP, uh, the opposition party that is largely Kurdish, uh, but is ready to speak uh, uh, for uh, the disappeared people. I have to particularly mention uh, MP uh, Ömer Gergerlioğlu, who is a former head of uh, Human Rights Association in Turkey, who is doing amazing job day and night about uh, enforced disappearances, but of no use. You know, in the end, these, these families are continuing to suffer. 
So how come then United Nations, because this is not, uh, you know, just allegations, United Nations has involved in this case and asked some explanation from Turkey. How did they get involved and what was the response? Well, first of all, this is not only an explanation, this is also a, a call for any member of a family who has a missing member of the family to go to the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner. United Nations has a special body, Human Rights uh, Commissioner's Office, and Human Rights Commissioner's Office can uh, receive individual applications about any kind of human rights violations in any member country. Of course, not all member countries are open to individual applications. For example, Pakistan does not accept any individual uh, application to Human Rights Commissioner's Office, but Turkey has done that. Uh, and still, uh, it is a window of opportunity for people who are victims of any human rights violations. I'm not speaking only about uh, kidnappings, but this office has done some good job in the past. For example, uh, a former uh, teacher from Pakistan was kidnapped together with his wife and his two daughters, uh, brought uh, to Turkey. Uh, the husband and wife were uh, arrested in Turkey. Uh, the, the rest of the family appealed to the uh, United Nations Human Rights Commissioner. The Commissioner's Office uh, organized a, a group of uh, working group uh, composed of lawyers, and the working group first asked for um, a defense uh, from the Turkish side. And the, the Turkish Foreign Ministry is given a certain time period to respond to allegations. And uh, in this particular case, the Turkish government didn't give any, uh, you know, acceptable explanation. So the working group uh, presented its, its report to United Nations Human Rights Commissioner and called for immediate release of the members of the family. In the end, they were released. So uh, it does work. It does not always work, but it does work. Uh, a similar uh, mechanism works with European Court of Human Rights, but since European Court of Human Rights has thousands, tens of thousands of cases about current uh, human rights violations in Turkey, uh, that, that, that strategy doesn't work. It doesn't give real results. In the case of Moldova, for example, once again, uh, uh, kidnapping. For some time, these people are also enforced disappeared people because they are kidnapped in Moldova. They are uh, sent to Turkey and for a, for a period of time their family members are not informed about their whereabouts. So it is an enforced disappearance case. Uh, the European Court of Human Rights actually uh, decided in favor of the kidnapped people and against the Moldovan government, but it didn't help. The, the, the court invited Turkey to release the people in question. Turkey didn't do that and they are all uh, sentenced to lengthy prison sentences now. But still, Europe, United Nations Human Rights Commissioner's Office is a, uh, is a relevant uh, authority, and I, I advise and invite anybody who has a relative, not necessarily uh, disappeared very recently, but even from back 1980s and 1990s, should file a, a case in uh, United Nations. Uh, and one, one last question regarding this. Um, surely some international pressure works via human rights uh, campaigns and other international bodies like United Nations. But if you were to sum up what exactly can be done for the viewers of this video, I'll, I'll put some links, the relevant links, uh, such as Amnesty campaign about this enforced people, the recent case. But what else is a list of things that can be done because you're working on this topic very closely? What can people who, who watch this video can do to help the situation to get better? Obviously, especially if they are outside Turkey, there is more room for them to, to do something about this. First of all, uh, there are things that every, <coughs> every person can do individually, particularly if you are living in a country like United Kingdom, a democratically responsive country. You can write to your member of parliament and say, I watched a video that mentioned six people disappeared. Actually, there is an, another disappearance only on the 6th of August uh, this month. There was another uh, former state official uh, kidnapped, uh, and it is already almost 20 days. We don't know whereabouts of him. Uh, so this is continuing on. So you can just write to your MP and say, 
you know, I want my government to be uh, vigilant about this issue and I want any kind of relationship with my government and the Turkish government put a condition on uh, on this human rights violation issue. The Turkish government should do something about this issue. So this is at the very uh, individualistic uh, level. You can also individually write to United Nations human rights commissioners. You can write uh, to uh, other international organizations, like you mentioned Amnesty International. Human rights, human rights Watch is HIW, is very active, particularly on uh, enforced disappearances cases, and about the six people uh, HRW has already uh, publicized its own report. So make just a small Google research about en enforced disappearances, Turkey, Human Rights Watch, and you will find all the dossier there, names and the, and the story, uh, and that you can use, you know, to uh, raise awareness in your uh, community. There are um, organizations that are helping uh, the members of the families uh, of uh, disappeared people. Uh, if you are a Turkish speaker, just make a search about Jumartesi Anneleri. This is the Saturday Mothers. Uh, and donate something uh, to them because that is uh, the greater cause. Uh, and one thing beautiful I have seen, uh, despite the polarization of opposition in Turkey, the Saturday mothers uh, invited uh, the families, members of families of the current uh, enforced disappeared people, uh, and it became an uh, over-embracing uh, cause. It's not only a Kurdish cause, now it's a cause of all victims of enforced disappearances. So whatever you do for Saturday mothers will also help the recent victims of enforced disappearances. And also, uh, you know, if you, if you have any kind of uh, uh, business relationship with any Turkish company, you know, raise this issue. Raise this issue. If uh, you are buying something from Turkey, selling something to Turkey, raise this issue and say, please speak to your government. I don't want, I cannot continue this forever. You know, this is a shameful record of human rights violations on Turkey's record. This, there has to be something done. Turkey is still a, a candidate country for European Union, so European Council is a good place to write to, and the, your, your member of European Parliament also is a good person to write to and ask uh, for activism. Yeah. Um, one more thing, you know, like because we assumed in a way, or the, the, the evidence indicated in that way at least, that the government is perpetrating this, but once these people are uh, disappeared, let's say, and the authorities are informed, like the most recent case, uh, don't they look for these people, you know, like, or did, did they just cover up, you know, what, what exactly happening? Like, is there any, uh, is, because we don't have to assume that the, the viewers will know the details of this issue. For instance, what has happened when, when these people are informed? Was there a manhunt try to search for these people? And why in the end, if there wasn't government or any security, but it was after them, why they were actually captured and put into custody, which actually goes with, with the same story, but if they were just lost and just disappeared themselves, why wouldn't they, you know, like treat it like, oh, they are found, now you can go home. But in fact, put with a specific uh, solicitor and kept isolated, not even uh, allowed their families to, to visit them in extensive amount of time. Uh, Mr. Siskin, as you uh, summarized beautifully, everything that the state officials are saying and doing about these uh, cases of enforced disappearances suggest that this was done by state officials, one, and during their uh, disappearance they were tortured. You know, at least uh, psychologically they were tortured and they don't want this to be uh, publicized. Uh, they didn't let uh, in independent uh, lawyers to speak to the uh, people who are They found. meaning not the, not the enforced disappearance, but the, the government doesn't allow this to the Turkish be police. publicized. The, 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 the Turkish, Turkish police and the prosecutor didn't let uh, members of the Ankara Bar Association to go and speak to the uh, disappeared persons. The Turkish police didn't, does not leave the family members to speak one to one uh, with uh, the disappeared members of their family. 
the Turkish court puts a gag order on uh, the disappearance case, so you cannot publicize anything in Turkey about this case. You cannot claim that they, are, they disappeared. You cannot question the uh, inconsistent information that is coming from the state officials. So everything pinpoints towards the same place. There is an obvious enforced disappearance that is perpetrated by state officials and it involves a certain level of torture. Now, the point is, what happened when the family members went to the police? You know, the, the, people usually wait a few hours or sometimes a few days if suddenly a member of family does not show up, come, come back from work and so on. But if they are uh, kidnapped by people, you know, civilian looking police officers and so on, they usually go to the prosecutor on the same day. And uh, the Turkish police continued on a consistent denial about their involvement. They always said, we don't know. Well, you, you can say we don't know, but there is an obvious claim here. They say about 10 people came and took my husband. And there are about another 10 people who witnessed this uh, occasion. And the police does not even open a file of investigation. The prosecutor does not open a file of investigation. In this recent case of uh, abduction or disappearance, let us say, on the 6th of August, for example, the family f themselves found the car of the disappeared person and they invited the prosecutor to come and take a report about the car because, you know, the car can have evidences. And the, the, the answer they received from the prosecutor is this, uh, wait there, your husband should turn back to his car. Uh, and they, they never came and look for uh, evidence. It's obvious, you know, nobody wants these cases to be solved, not the police, not the prosecutors, not the judicial organs. Uh, only uh, independent lawyers are trying to do something and human rights advocates are trying to do something. Uh, when, uh, after six months, these four people suddenly uh, were found in the terror uh, desk of the Ankara... After a social media Twitter campaign, I think. After inter well, in the, after the European, after the international uh, United Nations asked uh, a, for a defense from Turkey, they were found, uh, and there was a huge social media campaign, uh, international campaign about their whereabouts, they were suddenly found. But the point is, uh, very recently, uh, the MP that I mentioned, Ömer Gergerlioğlu, who is a member of the Parliamentary Commission on Human Rights, asked a question to the chair of the Parliamentary Commission about these four people. You know, where were they for six months? What did they tell to the prosecutor about their whereabouts for six months? Uh, it's obviously a public interest issue and the public wants to know, where, where were they? Uh, and the answer they received from the police is this. Uh, we never were looking for these people because there was no application about their disappearance. So the police claims that the family didn't even apply uh, to the police. And this is a complete sheer lie. You know, first of all, Europe, United Nations applied about their disappearance. Human Rights Watch started a campaign, and Human Rights Watch does not make a social campaign without contacting the officials in uh, the country in question. So they have been, the family members have been speaking to members of the parliament, they have been speaking to the media, they have been uh, organizing a social media campaign, they have been writing to international bodies, Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, United Nations, European Council, and so on. So uh, the, the MP in question gave a list of 13 national and international bodies to whom an application was made. And here the police claims that there was no application about their disappearance. So there was no file. They, they were not sought after, the police says. But when they are found, they are arrested. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, that goes without saying that we have now covered this story so everyone can look into more details and we can expect people who watch this to engage with this story, write about this and, and, and make sure it doesn't get lost in the details. 
and, and chase the com international campaigns about this story. And hopefully, with the pressure that creates, it will, it will be end of these enforced disappearances in Turkey and one democratic step at a time and it will, everything will be better. Thank you very much for joining and explaining all these cases and sharing your insight about it. And we'll hope to see you soon again for other questions that we have. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching. If, if you like this video, please, uh, you know, and if you have any questions, please mention them in the question so we can take it up in the next episodes. Have a nice day. Thank you.